Okay, so I have adjusted colors. I've done dodge and burn more more in the foreground than in the background for sure. But you can all, always do dodge and burn in the background too. Like if I wanted to to darken just parts of this this uh, mound in the far back, I could use burn set on midtones and a low exposure and just kind of pass over it so it sinks back, but maybe more at the bottom than at the top. Burn that edge in a little bit. And then if I think it's a little too colorful, I can, because burning can often saturate colors, I can use a sponge tool and I can desaturate Remember, you can set the sponge tool to desaturate and saturate. Take out some of those variations. And this is all fine-tuned stuff. I could burn just the upper edge of this mountain. Maybe the back corner a little bit. But then that looks a little too sharp. So burning can really sometimes affect things more strongly than you intend. So use it sparingly. And I often will do it on a duplicate layer and then blend it in with the layer behind. So that seems, eh, you know, actually that seems about right. So now, what can we do? Well, I want atmosphere. So notice, I've done everything in a pretty clean cutout way. So except for some slight feathered selections, the edges are pretty sharp. But in real landscapes, and some of them are not as clean as they should be, like this one, let me change to my lasso tool, like that little, buzz of of light pixels is a little annoying so I can go in with my one feather and chop those off at least in some places and that will help set it back a little bit into the distance oops I'm on the wrong layer looked like the right layer in the preview let's get to the right layer Gotta be this. Come on. Yeah, that actually doesn't make it that much better. So what we need is atmosphere. You know, this kind of softening that naturally happens. You see when we actually have photographs of mountain ranges, the edges get a little blurrier as they recede back into the distance. It's called atmospheric perspective. So instead of erasing them and softening them, we're gonna instead add in, composite in atmosphere composite in mist and we do that with what's called a texture overlay so it's a good time to save your work this is all optional but it can be very helpful so i'm going to do a google image search and in my google image search i'm going to type in mist misty texture overlay and I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to change the size to Large. And I'm basically looking for ones without watermarks, right? ones that are free, that give you these kind of photographs of clouds and mist. And this works for almost anything. This can work for rain. This can work for um, a sandstorm. 
It's just kind of heavy particles in the atmosphere that we can play with. So I got a few of them, all kind of clean. That one's really soft. This one looks promising and it's large enough. I want to open the image in new tab, make sure it doesn't have watermarks and it's good enough for at least screen resolution. Same one with this. Open it in a new tab. Look at it up close. Yeah, pretty good. All right, now I'm going to save those to my assignment folder. And then just like we've been learning with all of these compositing projects, I'm going to bring it, close all these tabs, try to save memory. I'm going to bring it on top of my image. So let's start with this one. And I'm going to go ahead and stretch it. You know, these are organic textures. We're going to be doing more with clouds on assignment four. You're actually going to make your own clouds. But right now, I'm just going to stretch it out so it covers my image. And then to make it an overlay, I'm going to change it from normal mode to a different layer style. So pin light's a little too strong, right? So I'm going to try soft light. And then I can play with the opacity. And it's like glazing an oil painting. So you can see how that's now kind of on the lists. It's like the lens is ref reflecting all this light. And I can take the opacity of it down. And it helps to give a little bit of that atmosphere that wasn't there before. I can also control T and warp it and kind of shift it around. So if I want to tug up some of the atmosphere over here, I can. That works better when it's not over the rock so much. And that gives me more believability. It brightens up the, and kind of gives softer edges, winding back. Now I need something in the mountains. So I'm gonna take my other one, drag it on, move it up to where the mountain line is. I think stretch it up a little bit. And then I'm going to take my eraser at 100% opacity, very soft, very large, so 0% hardness. I'm going to first rasterize it so I can erase away from it. And I'm going to erase away from this bottom edge. And then I'm going to set it to soft light. At a lower opacity. Actually not that low because I'm liking it. And I can move it around. I can warp it. I can erase more away from it. You see how that gives me that mist on the mountain. Pretty helpful. In fact, I might layer this a few times. I might put it there so it's kind of in the sky and then duplicate it and transform it, control T, flip it horizontally. And stretch it lower. Like so.
So those are texture overlays. Now what about kind of special effects like cosmic rays, sun flares, things like that. I don't want you to go too crazy. You can always play with it. But I did pull as references some of those siren lights. And these can be used as texture overlays too. So if I want some like weird lights in the heavens in my fantasy landscape. I can do that. And I treat it the same way I've treated the clouds. I'm going to rasterize it first so I can erase away. I'm going to use that 100% soft edged eraser to get rid of the hard edges. And then I'm going to set it to soft light and play with the opacities. And if I really like it here, it feels like kind of a lens flare effect and think it's a little overdone here, I can always take my eraser at a lower opacity and dim it where I don't think it's all that helpful. It gives a little more nuance to my sky as well. And you can just keep layering, having fun with these as you wish. And that does give me some interesting purples that I like in those mountains. And I can just keep that going. So this is just me playing around, but the other nice thing about texture overlays is because they're they're generally low opacity and quite soft, they don't need to be that big in terms of resolution in order to be really useful helpful to you. So on this one, I'm going to erase it from both the top and the bottom because I don't want those hard edges. Oh, I want to go back to 100%. So make sure you get rid of your hard edges that show up in your image. Then you can play with different blending styles. So I could try lighten, you know, as opposed to soft light. Soft light does a really nice job kind of blending everything together and then playing with the opacity. So that just gives a little sparkle and shine to my fantasy landscape. Now each time I add something new, I make it a little bit bigger as a file. So it's important to save your work. And then if you're not using a layer to go ahead and delete it. So I'm not using that, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I'm not using this, uh, but I like it. Yeah, I'll keep that in. Maybe I'll use it with my animation. All right, so now how do I finish it off? Well, I have to crop it to my guides. So I use the crop tool, 